hot and cold, I looked everywhere for what I Hi there. Welcome to SOS. I am your host, Jennifer Elizabeth Masters. Thank you for joining me tonight. Tonight's show is all about magnetizing what you want. Yes, manifesting. The law of attraction, how it works, why it doesn't work for some, and how to live your best life using manifestation every day. Tonight is a very special show for two reasons. The first, I am broadcasting to you live from Boulder, Colorado. I'm celebrating my son's, my oldest son's birthday. And on top of that, we are under a full strawberry, honey, hot rose moon and a lunar eclipse. Holy cow, should be hot. Even though we're manifesting, it can still be hot. I am a heart-based, intuitive soul sculptor and a fearless, intuitive coach and healer. I guide you to chip away at whatever obstructs your health, happiness, or success to have the life of your dreams. I'm also an international best-selling author, and you can find my books, including my audiobook, Orgasm for Life, on Audible and also Amazon. My website is jenniferelizabethmasters.com. My goal each week is to share tools that work and energy to uplift you. At the same time, hopefully brightening your day, adding a little joy, humor, wisdom, and a little irreverence to get you thinking outside the box. Well, this show is for anyone that's interested in creating more happiness, vibrant health, abundance, loving relationships, and to rise above circumstances, which we have a lot of going on right now, so that you're thriving and enjoying life fully. I'll help you to expand your mind, your heart, and the infinite possibilities available to you. In this next hour, you'll hear why you absolutely can manifest, who can benefit, what can you manifest, what steps to take, and exactly what to do to manifest. And now, you've been manifesting unconsciously all your life, but what we're going to do in this hour is learn how to really (laughs) stop detracting from your personal greatness and live your best life, and how to become a personal freaking magnet for good, and how to create miracles in your life every day. So I will be taking callers at about the half hour mark. The call in number to the show is 888-627-6008 or 323-744-4831. I'm really excited to share how easily you can manifest what you want and to uncover how we unconsciously manifest what we don't want. So by the end of the show, you'll have a very clear picture and instructions on how to manifest your heart's desire every day. Well, first of all, let's look at the meaning of abundance. Abundance, what is it? A very large quantity of something. Plentifulness of the good things in life. Prosperity. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, who can manifest? You, your kids, your spouse, your partner, everyone can manifest. Yes, even you. If I can do it, you can do it too, and I'll show you how. I will give you all the secrets to manifesting, so grab your glass of sparkling, bubbly, or water, as well as a pen and notebook, and buckle your seatbelts. So... Why can you manifest? What is the underlying reason that I'm telling you that you can manifest? Because it is your birthright. You were born an abundant being. Everything you need to manifest is already inside of you. And all I'm doing is just reminding you of all the information that are that's stored inside your cells. Well, why would you want to manifest? Why would you want to learn how to master manifesting? Well, I'll tell you why. Life becomes easier 
Wouldn't you like it to be easier? When you step into the flow of abundance, and right now you might be feeling like you are like a salmon swimming upstream, the opposite of in the flow. Well, some of the things that you can manifest, and, and the sky is the limit here, but I want you to just kind of expand your mind. You can manifest free stuff. People might give you things, free vacations, discounts, help, a relationship, a house, a car, a job, a cat, a dog, a lover, vibrant health. All of these things are things you can manifest. I manifest every single one of those driving down a back lane of a desert <laughs> up in, in, um, in the little town of Rosamond, I found my dog Yoda, manifested him. What else can you do to manifest? Well, you can make appointments easily, even when the book is full. And I'll show you how. I've got a story about my trip to Boulder and during the COVID shutdown and, and some things that could have been really impossible. Life becomes one of ease and grace when you use the principles of manifestation. And I'll be teaching you those tonight. So instead of having to work so darn hard, you can work less and have more easily. Well, sometimes we manifest things we don't want. We think we want. Maybe we think we do. And then later on, we recognize that we should have asked for something different. Have you ever done that? Remember, we always have the power to choose. Now, I have a story to tell you about someone who manifested the things that she thought she wanted. And this will illustrate the what not to do scenario. So I have a friend in California who prayed and prayed for abundance. She grew up in the Midwest. Her family were farmers. They worked very hard for what they had. And she loved the farm that she grew up on. She had many pleasant memories about that farm and, and her childhood. And so she dreamt of having her own. Her dream was a bit of a fantasy. You know, as children, we may not recognize what goes into keeping a farm or ranch running, pristine and beautiful. Well, my friend got her beautiful ranch but what she also got was too much to manage. She has several horses. She's got dogs, a cat, bees, and goats. Extensive formal property to be maintained. A huge house, a barn, horse paddocks to manage and clean, plus a guest house with tenants. This was her dream, but it became her nightmare. What she didn't ask for is manageable abundance. On top of everything, her abundance costs her plenty each month to manage. She wished she'd asked for abundance she could manage. She became a slave to the very dream that she manifested, a huge mortgage, horse paddocks that needed to be cleaned daily, and horses that cost over $1,200 a month to feed alone, and vet bills that kept adding up and adding up to well over $20,000. It's very important to have clarity about, about what you want and what you don't want. Maybe freedom to travel and afford other things could be part of your manifestation. Well, we now know what abundance means. Plenty as opposed to lack. Prosperity and flow rather than being strapped for cash. Abundance means the time to do what you love with those you love, ease and grace that flow through everything in your life. Well, we talked a little bit about what we can manifest, but I want to go into more detail because it's not just tangible things. You could manifest more time with those you love. I'll tell you a little story about that. I was celebrating a very big birthday last year and I wanted to spend it with my kids. My, my, I call them my adults because they're all grown. And they all live in Colorado. So I sent out to the universe. I wanted to have a memorable birthday, one I would never forget. And uh, I flew to Colorado 
And shortly after I arrived, we got a huge snowfall. My birthday's in October. We had a huge snowfall, almost three feet of snow. My flight was canceled. My week-long trip ended up being almost two, so I manifested extra time with those I loved. And it was definitely a birthday I will never forget. We can have extended vacations. We could get special discounted rates. And sometimes we can get service people offer to do work for us at a discounted rate. That's a great thing, too. The best airline fares, better weather on your wedding day. Now, I'll tell you a little story about that. My son was getting married last July, and it was in Michigan. It was really freaking hot. And (laughs) the whole wedding venue was out in the sun. The reception was in a barn. It was lovely and decorated. But the ceremony, and I had to be up on the dais, in a fancy dress and cowboy boots and it was hot and I didn't want to stand there in the sun. So I asked, could you please cool it down a little bit for the wedding so we don't have to stand in the hot sun? Well, about 30 minutes before the wedding, guess what happened? Clouds moved in the temperature dropped and it started to rain. And my daughter-in-law, with with graceful aplomb, said, don't worry, we'll just delay the wedding uh, 30 minutes. Well, what actually happened was I said a quick prayer, and I asked for the rain to move out, which it did. They wiped down the benches so everybody could sit on dry seats, and it was about 10 degrees cooler for the wedding ceremony. There's a lot of things we can manifest. We are way more powerful than we give ourselves credit for. You can also manifest the best parking spots at hotels, apartments, at the beach, grocery stores. We can manifest free stuff. And I have a story about three free stuff. I love free stuff. About three years ago, on June 7th, my son's birthday, on a very hot day, I was living in the Mojave Desert, I walked into a Goodwill thrift store looking for a summer dress. I was teaching a workshop and I needed a new dress and I really didn't want to buy a brand new dress. So as I walked into the Goodwill store, I could see to the right and to the left thousands and thousands and thousands of articles of clothing and it was so overwhelming all these t-shirts and dresses, long and short. The energy was so oppressive, I could hardly breathe. So after looking for about five minutes, I left. I just couldn't handle the energy. So I walked out, shifted my energy, cleared myself, and I I said, you know, how am I going to get this dress? And... um, I said to God in the universe, how can I easily and effortlessly have a pretty sundress without having to shop for it? I had complete faith in the universe being able to bring this to me. And what's interesting is the very next day, I shared a booth at a fair where I was selling my books and doing readings in Los Angeles with a friend. I did not anticipate what happened next. I spotted a dress at a booth without even knowing it was a consignment shop. The colors were perfect for me. It was long and kind of a strappy dress. And my friend says to me, try it on. So I went into the restroom, tried it on, and it looked lovely. So I was about to pay for the dress. And my friend Anna, without any prompting on my part at all, said to me, you know, I don't know why, but I'm supposed to buy this dress for you. I tried to talk her out of it. Goodness gracious, the dress was only $7, but she wouldn't have it. She insisted she buy the dress for me. So I'm wearing the dress tonight, as a matter of fact. (laughs) It was all the colors I loved, teal, magenta, cream, black, green, long, flowing. I put it on immediately, and needless to say, it was perfect. I loved it, and I was grateful to my friend for her generous spirit. Within two weeks of receiving that first dress, I took care of my friend, we talked about her earlier, my friend Shannon's horses, and her husband and and she, one of her horses colicked, and I called the vet, 
you know, got her taken care of. And when she came back, she gave me a beautiful long green and turquoise black long sundress. And then <laughs> on Friday, August the 4th, less than three months after I made my declaration and request of the universe, a package arrived from my mother in Canada. And she had been consignment shopping and bought a dress that she decided she didn't like after she got it home. And she put it in an envelope and sent it to me. And this one was a short dress, turquoise, black, and burgundy. And it fit perfectly. It was really flattering. In less than three months, I had three, count them, three free dresses that I didn't have to shop for. Do you remember what I asked the universe for? I said, how can I have, easily and effortlessly, a dress I don't have to shop for? I stated what I wanted. I let it go. I stopped shopping, stopped looking, and I allowed the universe to orchestrate my life for me. In less than three months, I had three new dresses I loved without having to shop for any of them. So again, I want to just mention, what did I do? I stated clearly in a positive way what I wanted. I let it go. And I stopped putting any energy at all into a dress. I didn't go shopping. I didn't go on the internet looking for dresses. I let it go. I let the universe take care of it. We can manifest appointments when there are none. And I did this recently in Colorado. Three months without my hair done. <laughs> the last time I had my hair colored was in in February, and I had to get back to my naturally blonde blonde hair color. <laughs> so um, I got to Colorado, and um, you know, my son's birthday was he was coming up. My my daughter's birthday was was happening. So. Um, I called uh, my old hairdresser. I used to live here and had her on speed dial. I texted her, had a conversation, and she said to me, well, I've got an appointment. It's 445 on Saturday. Well, that was smack dab in the middle of my soon-to-be 39-year-old son's birthday <laughs> that would be underway. So here's what I did to get a better appointment. I took that appointment. I said thank you. That was the first thing I did. And as soon as she told me that that was the only appointment available, I expressed gratitude. I said, that's great. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you footing, uh, fitting me in since I'm not a regular client anymore. Thank you. I know you're busy. I appreciated her. And then next I said, well, there's certain to be a cancellation. Can you put me on your cancellation list? And she said to me, well, I doubt it. I'm so busy right now. I'm getting you know, starting to see clients after this lockdown, I really don't know that there will be any cancellation. I said, well, just in case, put me on your cancellation list. Thank you. Expressing gratitude again. I didn't listen to the naysayer. I didn't jump into her boat of negativity. No, I doubt there will be one. I didn't join her in that thought. I was certain there would be a cancellation. So when she texted me, <laughs> I think it was, I think it was yesterday. She texted me. I have a cancellation. It is for I think it was 1:45 on Friday. I said absolutely. Thank you. It's the first thing I said. Thank you. Took the appointment. Expressed my gratitude when I got into her studio. Thanked her again. And yes, had my. It's the first time I've ever had to have my temperature taken to have my hair done. <laughs> okay. So being grateful is, is part of this process. Gra gratitude is the fuel of the universe. The reason that I get what I want when I want it is because I'm incredibly grateful. And I, I am not paying lip service to the universe. You know, there is a way to be grateful and say, oh, you yeah, I'm grateful for my life. I'm grateful for my health. No, I'm talking about heartfelt gratitude that you really feel. Sometimes, and I've had clients say to me, have you ever expressed gratitude where you are moved to tears? All the time. I will be out in nature, 
smelling a lilac blossom or on the beach, I am in such gratitude that I am moved to tears. So gratitude is the fuel. It's the fuel for the universe. So what are the manifesting steps? We're going to look at these again. Be crystal clear on what you want. I wanted a color. That was the number one thing. The haircut, mm, I could wait till I got back to California. I could wait another month. I could take my little paper scissors and cut my hair if I wanted to. I only took what I needed, absolutely needed. I expressed gratitude for the first appointment, even that it wasn't the one I wanted, even though it wasn't perfect. I asked to be on the cancellation list, and I thanked her again. I was certain that a perfect appointment would open up for me so that I could enjoy my son's birthday with all his friends and my family together without me having to leave in the middle of the party. It was a win-win. I wasn't being selfish in my desire. I wasn't taking anything away from another person to get what I wanted. Notice what I am not doing. Do you notice what I'm not doing? Nowhere did I fight with my hairdresser. I was gracious, grateful, appreciative. Kindness and compassion will take you far. It takes us all far. And what's important to know is that the same system works for doctor's appointments, therapy appointments, parking spots, and anything else you desire. When I changed insurance carriers, I was told I'd have to wait six weeks or more for an appointment. I smiled to the receptionist at the doctor's office and I said I'm certain there's going to be a cancellation for an earlier appointment and I thanked her guess what I was called the very next day with a cancellation within a week so I don't go into doubt I don't go into fear I'm grateful and I'm certain that I will have what it is I want that's what you call faith. So back to the Colorado thing. I'm here at my son's in Boulder. It's a beautiful place here. Well, originally, I was only supposed to be in Colorado for a week encompassing my daughter's birthday on May the 21st. And then my son, Adams asked me to stay and celebrate his birthday with him. Well, actually, that's not what he said. He said, so you're only coming to celebrate one of your kids' birthdays, not mine? <laughs> that was what he said. <laughs> Why don't you stay longer so that you can, you can be here for my rollerblading, rollerblading birthday potluck dinner, and I'll buy you the rollerblades of your choice. So not only did I get my visit extended, but I got to rollerblade with my son, Adam, on my new rollerblades. Uh, I was a little shaky. Yoda ran around behind us, and Adam's friend Blaine was on his skateboard. Sounds like a bunch of kids, doesn't it? Well, we're all kids at heart, and that's for sure. So I have to add here that I was also able to have two lovely visits with my other son, David, and his wife, Danny. They both have their own businesses, and their schedules opened up, so there was plenty of quiet, relaxed time together when it didn't look like there was going to be. So there's a lot of things that can happen and change when we have that openness and faith and allow the universe to step in. So I left my home in, um, in Ojai May 20th, and now I won't return until June 9th, almost three weeks with my adult children. So that was an unexpected surprise. And in the midst of changing my return date, I got the opportunity to expand the gift of income to my pet sitter. So, you know, there's often a win-win situation. He'd been hurting financially during this, this lockdown. Nobody was traveling, and he wasn't getting pet sitting jobs. The universe loves win-win solutions where everyone wins. I got to spend more time with my adults, my pet sitter got more money, and everyone is happy. So what is unconscious manifestation? If what we've just discussed is consciously co-creating, consciously manifesting, what is unconscious manifestation? Well, humans can easily get caught up in stories, 
and fear. Our stories carry us away from our truth, and we often tell ourselves horrible things. We often speak to ourselves in ways that we wouldn't talk to a stranger. We tell ourselves we're worthless, good for nothing, stupid, not intelligent, too fat, too old. We might even tell ourselves we will never achieve anything. We might even say to ourselves, money doesn't grow on trees. I have to work hard for my money. The more we love ourselves, the easier it becomes to manifest. Why is that? I'm glad you asked. We manifest from our hearts. And are you aware what magnificent work your heart does? Your heart is a big magnet. So whatever is stuck in our heart from old trauma stays there radiating and bringing back a perfect match. So let's say perhaps your mother's a narcissist, a narcissist like mine. And without healing the mother wound, you might do what I did until I healed myself. I kept attracting narcissists until I finally realized, hmm, I must be the one with the issue. <laughs> we are magnets. Our hearts radiate whatever joy, love, or pain resides in our hearts. The words we speak, the energy we hold or radiate is what brings us our perfect match. So we attract the energy we hold. So if we're in fear, let's say maybe we're afraid of angry, scary men. Guess what we attract? It isn't the passive, soft-spoken man. We attract angry, scary men. Exactly what we fear. What we fear we attract. Why? Because our focus is there. Our thoughts go there. Wherever we put our energy expands. If we fear our partner will cheat on us, it's likely they will. We emanate energy and it's our responsibility to raise our vibration and heal the past so we radiate love, compassion, and gratitude so that we live in the flow. You know, it took me 35 years almost to get to this place of manifesting in the moment. However, there were still times when I was young that I was so impassioned that I managed to get what I focused on. So let's look at the steps to manifesting. You want to get crystal clear on what you desire. Let's say it's a house. Maybe you want a house. How many floors do you want in your home? What style of home do you want? Do you want a duplex, a townhome, or a single family home? Are you looking for a condo? Is it on a large acreage or a smaller lot? Does it have a fenced in yard for your pets or open at the back? Does it have three bathrooms or just a simple two bedrooms and one bath? Get crystal clear. If it's a car you're wanting to manifest, focus on the make, the model, the color, and what accessories you desire. Heated and cooled seats, moonroof, sunroof, two-door, four-door, leather interior or cloth. What color interior? What color exterior? What are the things you absolutely won't budge on? Focus on what it would feel like to have this beautiful new car or new home. What would it feel like when you have it? So envision it. Think about what it would feel like. Do you see where I'm going? The feeling is the believing. The feeling that we have in our body, the excitement about it, is what generates this magnetism in our heart. How different will your life be if you have these things? You can send your creation off to the universe with a question. I'll give you a couple of questions you can ask. And these questions are some of the fastest ways to manifest. I, I use these often. How can I easily and effortlessly have a beautiful home in a place I love at a price I can afford where my animals are safe? That's a tall order, isn't it? That's exactly what I manifested when I got my place in Ojai. So I'm going to repeat that. It's really important. It's a writer downer. How can I easily and effortlessly have a beautiful home 
fill in the blank, in a place I love at a price I can afford where my animals are safe. Do you see it's all positive? Or here's another one. How can I easily and effortlessly have a used Lexus that is like new at a price I can afford with heated and cooled seats in my favorite color? And then let it go. Let the universe work for you. Say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Act as if. I've got a little story for you. I love stories and I have a million of them. So right before David got married last summer, I had to go buy cowboy boots. I had already bought two dresses for the wedding. And he, his bride wanted us to be in cowgirl attire. So uh, she was wearing cowgirl boots too. So I went to the boot barn in Ventura. And um, I went shopping for boots. And as luck would have it, I found a blue pair that really didn't match the dress I was supposed to wear. And then I finally found a pair of green boots. I looked at them and I went back and forth. I loved the blue ones. I could see myself wearing them with just about everything. Blue jeans, maybe even some shorts, who knows. Um, And I could hear in my head, get them both. So I'd already bought two dresses. I got the two boots. I walked out to my Honda that was sitting in the parking lot looking pretty, pretty bedraggled. My car was nearly 10 years old with 220,000 miles, all driven by me back and forth across the country. And I asked a lady, where could I get my car washed? My car looked pretty bad, actually. And she told me it was just down the road and, you know, through the woods kind of thing. So I get in my car and I start driving and I hear in my head, now this is important. If you pass a Lexus dealer, turn in. Now, I was not imagining it. That was not my ego speaking to me. This is my high self, my guides, whoever it is that talks to me when I'm quiet. If you pass a Lexus dealer, turn in. And this is me. Most of you, you're going you're gonna to get to know who I am. So I start arguing with them. Okay, I'll turn in, but they probably don't have the color I want. It has to be sand color or I'm not getting it. I turn in the parking lot and guess what? I'm looking for a used car, a gently used. And there's one in that soft sand color. They call it cashmere. So I took it for a test drive, and while I'm driving it, the only other thing I wanted besides sand color, because it's very hot here, I wanted heated seats. When I drive to Colorado, I wanted my butt and my tushy to be warm. And so we're driving down the highway, and the salesman says something to me about, are you hot? I said, yeah, it's pretty hot, and he puts the cooler on the seats. The seats not only heat, but they cool. And then he opens the moonroof. And I went, oh, my God. Okay, I'll take it. I was kind of an easy, easy sales salesperson here. I took that car. I said, this is it. So we went in and wrote it up. But that was one of those things. I listened to my guidance. I, I had no intention of buying a car that day. My Honda was dirty. It was full of stuff. I was not ready to let it go. But I listened, and I was in time with divine timing. It's very important that we listen to our guidance and <laughs> and follow what they tell us because I'm telling you, they'll make it so much easier if we would just stop fighting. All right, I've got another story for you. My father was an adventurer. He was a merchant marine. He was in the Air Force. And when I was a kid, he took my brother and I across Canada and the United States camping. We went to Bermuda. And he instilled in me a sense of adventure, among other things. He was a gardener, too. But I had a dream of becoming a flight attendant for the greatest airline in Canada, which was Air Canada. So right after high school, I talked about becoming a flight attendant. I got a job uh, at a Hyatt Regency in Toronto. But after that, I heard that Air Canada was hiring. 
Now you can imagine, I mentioned this to my family, and like so many families, they told me, forget about it, you're too short, you're not bilingual, <laughs> they'll never hire you. I was absolutely passionate about becoming a flight attendant. I focused on it. I dreamt of flying and pretty soon, like I said, I discovered Air Canada was hiring. I ignored the naysayers and I applied even though my family discouraged me and told me I would never be hired. I had the faith of a mustard seed. I went for it. I dressed up, I did my hair and makeup the best I could at the time went in with a positive attitude and a hell yeah, and guess what, I got hired. So my passion for travel inspired me to go for it, which is what I did. It's really impor important to follow your dreams. All righty. So um, we are going to take a caller, um, Cheyenne. I hear you're on Hi, the Jennifer. line. How are you? Hi there. How are you? I'm doing really, really good. Thank you. How's your evening so far? <laughs> it's great. It's good to hear your voice. Uh, Cheyenne um, is. A, would would you call call yourself a producer? Is that what you are, Cheyenne? Yes. Yes. Music producer. Music producer. Okay. And he recorded two of my books, Orgasm for Life in his studio, and um, my s next one that hasn't come out just yet. Um, you have a couple of stories to share, though, right? Um, yes, definitely. More than a couple. Um, but, you know, <laughs> just for tonight, a couple. It's been all, all my life, these, you know, so many stories, um, but definitely a couple that I can share tonight. So what's your experience been with manifesting and when you have problems come up, how do you handle them? Um, well, you know, f first of all, I'd, I'd like to say that the um, learning what manifestation is is, is is something that is quite new to me. It's It's been uh, maybe about two years that I've been learning how it works, although I've been manifesting all my life. Um, uh, for, for the most part, manifesting things that, um, you know, I didn't necessarily want, but it was just, a, a, you know, a, a subconscious thing that's been happening. I'm just happy to learn how these things work so, so that I can start using it in ways that uh, are beneficial to my well-being and my families and, and anybody else who, uh, who I come in contact with. Uh, so I'm really super grateful um, uh, about that, and you have been such a great help to to me and my wife and and my family in general. Um, we've learned so much from you, and so what what the steps that we're taking these days with manifestation is still I'm still learning. It's still an on ongoing process, but it all really starts from taking uh, a, a a good look at at yourself and. And uh, one thing that I do want to mention is it, it was huge what you were talking about earlier, which is um, manageable, manifesting things that that um, that are that are manageable. Because in so many cases, we might think, oh, well, I'd, I'd love to have this, and and I, I want to have that, and um, but you know, we're not necessarily thinking whether that what we want is is manageable. So that's that's a huge thing. Um, that that I've learned. So, would you be willing to talk about what happened uh, recently with your studio? Do you feel yeah, comfortable talking? Yeah. So what happened was, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I have a recording studio in Woodland Hills, uh, Los Angeles County, and when the uh, the lockdowns started happening due to COVID nineteen in LA. Uh, I, you know, I really couldn't go to the studio, um, and so I really had to start thinking about how I'm going to work from home, and obviously not being able to operate out of the studio, that would, it would have a negative effect on, on finances, but although money wasn't uh, coming in because of the, uh, the fact that I can't operate the studio, um, bills were still there, and... 
So I decided to try and negotiate with my landlord, hoping that he would be cool with it. And he does have, the funny thing is, he actually has a reputation for not being super easy to negotiate with. He's he's definitely not the guy that's, that you will negotiate with. So I yeah. knew that those challenges were going to be there. Um, uh-huh. But we started doing a 21-day um, meditation um, that had to do with abundance with you on, on WhatsApp. And that really was, was such a great experience, first of all. But we ended up negotiating with my landlord um, at the, the studio. And for some crazy reason, he, he was perfectly fine with us paying half of the rent that I usually pay, um, not paying any of the utilities, and, and paying half of the, uh, half of my rate until January first, uh, twenty twenty one, um, and so that was such a relief for me because if he had not agreed, I would have had to either um, defer the payments, which I didn't want to do because that would have been a lot of money. By the time I went back, I, I don't know how it, much in debt it I would be. It puts to you under tremendous yeah. pressure when you have. A, a back debt, a backlog of debt to, to start off yeah. with. So it wasn't it like yeah. three months of, of rent that you owed? Something like that? No. During the shutdown? No, I actually, no, we, 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 um, we continued making payments, but it was, it was getting the first two months Part- I made, uh, I made, the, I made partial payments. But we deferred the uh, the remain the remain uh, the remaining of the rent. By the third okay. month, he agreed to half of the rate and to erase the first two months of the deferment. He he erased that debt, which is okay. crazy because I want, some can people. Can you stop yeah. for a second, Cheyenne? Stop for a sec, because I remember um, uh, Michelle, your wife, texted me, and and she said that you guys were having some difficulty deciding what to do and that you kept wanting to do what was best for the family. And you felt, cause I, I want to bring you back to this. You kept saying that you felt it was best for the family that you give up the studio. And what did I say? Do you remember? Yes, that is, that is true. Yes. Yes. I think, um, you had mentioned to, to Michelle that we should negotiate and we should keep the studio. Yeah, because so so this is what I want I want to say. Sometimes in our ego mind, we think what's best for us is one thing, when really what's best for the family is that you have a place to work separately where you can go get in your car, drive to work and be in another, another location rather than everybody working from home. And I, that's the thing that I saw was that it was much more beneficial for you to keep that studio. But I suggested that you two pray about it the night before you talk to your landlord. Do you remember that? Yes, yes. So you prayed and I prayed. And then the next day was the day that you had it all worked out. And whew, literally, what a rel- yep, literally the very next day. I, and another thing I'd like to mention, which is very important, is that before I would, if, 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 if I wanted something or if I wanted something to happen, um, I would think about it all the time. I would, um, it would just really consume, consume me, my thoughts and, and, and everything. Uh, w- one thing that I, that I've been trying lately and, and in this particular case, I, 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 I tried it and it was successful is really the, the, the concept of letting go. So, that, that, that was very powerful. It's very powerful for me in specific because it's hard for me to let go of, of these thoughts. Um, so it's for, you know, we, we, we pray, we meditate, we accept that the universe is capable. Um, and then you let it go. The, the part that I feel like is, is, is super important to, uh, to, to remember is the letting go part that you were talking about earlier as well. I think it's super important. So, so what, what I want to ask you, Cheyenne, is, and thank you for sharing that story. It's, it's really beneficial for other people to hear how other people experience these types of things. 
So were you surprised with the outcome? Was it even better than you ever imagined? Yes. I, 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 the truth is I was. I was. Um, not surprised in a bad way, as in, like, I thought, no, there's no way my landlord were, w would agree. Surprised just in a good way. I don't know how to explain that. Um, surprised in a way where it's like, okay, I, I I knew that I knew this was going to happen because I had I, I I had accepted it, and I knew that this was this was going to be um, something that was going to take place. But at the same time, you know, it's it's still it's still a good surprise to 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 kind of feel like, you know, what I wanted happened, and and this particular individual, um, sort of everything, and he was around a tough and shifted so that he had it in his heart. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think that's uh, that's worthy of a, a, a gratitude card. I, I love to send out cards for when people do things nice for me. <laughs> so, yes. Um, yes, absolutely. Is there is there anything else that you you'd like to share that you've had an experience with in manifesting? Um, Maybe selling I mean, your I'm house. Really grateful for. Mm -hmm. Oh, which one again? When you sold your house. Yeah. Yeah, I was I wasn't as heavily involved in in that as 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 my wife was, but it definitely was not anything short of a miracle. Um it was just crazy how quickly um we we sold the house, how we needed to sell it and and the way that it just happened, how quickly it happened, we got exactly what we wanted. I mean, it's it's, it's didn't, crazy. Didn't the they really go didn't. on. They really go on. <laughs> the the real estate agent told Michelle that a it wouldn't sell and she wouldn't get her asking price and it would take for forever to sell it correct exactly exactly right yeah this, this, there, this is also another thing like uh, how how well women's memory is by the way you you know more about <laughs> you remember more <laughs> about my house selling than I do I just wanted to say that just for the record you know women's memory is amazing when you compare it to men yes. Yes, we do. We, we keep score, Cheyenne. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and, and sharing your stories and, and uh, your beautiful heart with us all. Thank you, Cheyenne. Absolutely. My pleasure. It's, it's, it's definitely an honor and a, and a privilege to be able to do things like this. I'm hoping that um, it made a difference in, in someone's life. Really, that's 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 the point here. And I'm very grateful to you and everybody else at uh, at your facility there. Thank you guys for giving me the time. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Cheyenne. Lots of love for you Talk and you Michelle. Too. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Ah, that was a beautiful story. So here's the thing is that we can be faced with a major problem and I know they were very stressed out about the, about the studio rent and, and they were having difficulty making a decision and so they used me to, um, to give them the guidance. So I channel and the, the, the guidance I get is clean and clear and it's always accurate. And so when they wanted to get rid of it, I just knew it was the best thing for, the, for this family, for them to keep the studio. So I'm so grateful it all worked out. So what I want to talk about is what Cheyenne was referring to about manifesting unconsciously. 95% of our thoughts are unconscious. Now, what does that mean? It means that of the 60-something thousand thoughts a day that we think, Maybe, maybe 3,000, no, not even, a very small percentage are we aware of. So when we are focusing on what we don't want, like I don't have enough money to pay for this. So there's a different way to say that kind of a statement. So we have to be very careful about how we speak about not having money 
for our rent, our mortgage, or to pay our bills. And I'm going to give you a couple of phrases that will help you. Because the way we speak, the words we speak, will energize the not having money and it will keep the money at bay. The more we focus on where is the check, where is that money, when is it going to get here, when is it going to be here, the longer the check will take to arrive because you are putting an emphasis on not having the money. Take a deep breath. We consciously choose to have abundance. How do we do that? By recognizing what abundance we have. When we acknowledge our abundance, and there's a lot of different ways to do this, it can be a simple mind shift. It is a, a change in our mindset. So acknowledging our abundance, uh, one of the ways we can do that is writing in a gratitude journal. Waking up in the morning and saying, I am so grateful for another day of life. Thank you, God. For me, thank you that I am alive to live another day. Thank you for my vibrant health. Thank you for my feet that move. Thank you for the food on the table, the roof over my head. There are a lot of things that we can, can say a prayer of gratitude over. When we start recognizing all the good that we have and appreciating it and being grateful for it, we will be given more. And this is the way it works. The more we focus on what we don't have, the more we don't have. So we want to shift our focus, acknowledge our abundance, shift our mindset, acknowledge the abundance by saying prayers every day. I'm grateful for my life. Thank you for my life. All right. So just to let you know, some of the things that I have helped people manifest, I had a lady in India contact me, and she said, I feel like you could help me. My father is wanting to, <laughs> to set up a, an arranged marriage, and I don't want to do that. I'm a doctor. I'm an educated woman. <laughs> and so I helped her. I helped her find love. I got her to break up with her boyfriend that she didn't love. And she is now living in Canada with her husband and her two children. So I've helped people find love. Another lady by the name of Helen, 17 years living a celibate lifestyle and saying, I will never again get married. I helped her find love. And she got married earlier this year. So I've helped clear hatred, hatred of the mother-in-laws towards the bride. I've helped people sell houses, find new ones, and in miraculous timelines. So that's just some of what I do. And I did promise to teach you how to manifest miracles on a daily basis. And the prayer I'm going to do very slowly, it's a very short prayer, but very powerful. And what I will share with you is... Some of the things, some of the techniques that I teach are so simple, so simple that people will say, oh, it's nothing. But it is the simplest of techniques that can net you the most power. And this prayer of miracles is one of them. Now, my friend Joanne Butler taught me this prayer back, I think it was 2008 or 2009, and I have used it to create miracles for others. Joanne is uh, in heaven and uh, such a beautiful woman she was, uh, so full of joy. She's like an earthbound angel. So this is exactly what she taught to me back then. You stand up with your hands in front of you like somebody is going to give you a gift. So you have your hands open, palms up. And you can say um, creator, Lord, however you say it. But I say mother, father, God. I know that miracles happen every day. I expect my miracle today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's that simple. And now 
I, I have miracles happen all the time. Sometimes miracles are small. Sometimes they're huge, but they're still miracles. And there is a secret about miracles. They will continue to happen, but you need to share. You need to talk to people about the miracle that you received. Tell people. Share your stories. I always share my stories of the miraculous. And that way, I'm guaranteed of continuing to receive more and more and more miracles. Okay, so you know I always have a no... Um, what's the bullshit part of manifesting? I have, I have a little segment here. I want to talk about that, but there's one more point that I haven't mentioned. It's very important to be generous. I have done thousands of energy clearings and healings for clients and anyone who has issues with money is grasping and greedy. There is an element of greed for people that have issues with money. And I understand I had it too. So we have to work on that. And how do we let go of greed? Well, we have to do the opposite. If you have clothes in your closet that you don't wear, broken items, or things you don't use, give them away, be generous. Give away the things you don't use, the books you don't read. Don't hoard them. Don't hold on to them thinking there will never be more money so that I could replace this. Don't think that way because there is always an abundance. Share the wealth. Be generous. I always do free giveaways. I help people that are in need. I answer thousands of questions on Quora. I am always giving away something for free. I give away this information here on this show for free. I give it generously, but I didn't always. Generosity is imperative to receive more. Gratitude is the fuel and generosity is the glue that makes it stick. Okay, so now what's the bullshit about manifesting? Well, this is what's bullshit, that it doesn't work. That you have to be a prophet to manifest, that you can't do it. And what I will tell you is if you believe you can't, you won't. Because our beliefs govern our world. So change those beliefs and know you were born with a prosperous mindset. Your birthright is to be abundant. And what will block you from manifesting? Fear, worry, anxiety, not being present, not being grateful, attempting to control the universe not letting go of your manifestations, bringing them back and, well, I need to fix this or add that. What I will tell you is that the universe will always orchestrate our lives for us. All we have to do is ask with clarity, let it go, and be grateful. I have so enjoyed sharing this hour with you. I love you. Stay safe. And have a fabulously abundant week. Good night, everyone. Going back, I'm going back, I'm going back to loving me. High and low, hot and cold, I looked everywhere for what I need. But now I know. Now I know I'm going back to loving me. And through the pain, the fire it made, I wouldn't change a single thing. Found a way to make it work, stronger for the road that. But now I know, now I know I'm going back to loving me I'm going back
back, I'm going back to loving me. High and low, hot and cold, I looked everywhere for what I need. But now I know, now I know, I'm going back to loving.